Greetings, Mech Warriors. I am your host, Get Good Fox, and welcome to a quick build and piloting guide for the standard archer. This is the ARC2R, the traditional archer. I'm going to show you how to customize and improve the original design from the perspective of someone early in the game, meaning no lost deck. And I'll also show you how to pilot it. But first, let's get into the archer mentality. Right, so the archer is a mech that honestly isn't awful in its stock configuration. Its main problem is that it overheats because it doesn't have any heat sinks. So my adjustment to it isn't really going to change its playstyle. It's just going to make it more heat efficient, which will greatly increase its damage output. As a result, normally I show you how how to use the stock archer. I'm gonna skip that though because the playstyle doesn't really change, but I will still show you how the redesign performs and therefore how to play the archer. My most important tip for the archer is you should really think about not just what the mech is equipped with, but the lance itself. Think of the lance as its own mech, where each mech is its own weapon on the lance mech, so to speak. You want to bring a fire support missile squad or just some kind of very long-range bombardment team with the archer so that you can kind of shell the enemy out at a distance and like obliterate them with mass long-ranged firepower and then anyone who gets through, hopefully they've been beaten up enough that your close range weapons are capable of knocking it out before it does a lot of damage. So that is the main thing I would advise when using the archer. Anyways, let's talk about the Archer. This is a 70 ton heavy mech. It's one of the unseen, and it's also a favorite of the Free Worlds League who love long range missiles. It has a maximum speed of 64 kilometers forwards, and if I put it in reverse, you'll see it has a maximum back pedal speed of 43 kilometers. This is very normal for a mech of its weight class, and don't underestimate that back pedal speed. That is the same speed as an Atlas coming straight at you top speed. Speed, so it is able to outmaneuver the larger, slower mechs with its back pedal, pummel them at long range, and it has a ton of armor, nearly the maximum for its chassis, meaning it can weather the limited long range firepower of the more multi-role blended range assault mechs such as the Atlas. Speaking of the Archer's firepower, it has a pair of LRM-20s in either side torso. The LRMs are supplied by four tons of ammo. It also has four medium lasers, one in each arm and two in the center torso. It also has these big punchy battle fists which do surprising amounts of damage, so the Archer can pack a punch at several unexpected ranges besides the obvious long range. Let's get into the mech bay though and start tinkering. And here we are in the mech lab. I'll go ahead and click details and you're going to see that this mech doesn't have any extra heat sinks and that's why it overheats so easily. If you're going to fire two LRM-20s, you've got to have heat sinks. Otherwise, well, you lose your DPS because that may sound like a lot of missiles and well, it is. But once you overheat, it's hardly any missiles because you can't shoot without overheating and shutting down. Or I guess if you override, you can just suffer some internal damage. But either way, your DPS is going to tank. So this is what we're going to do to improve the model. And here we are. So what did I do? Well, those LRM-20s got downgraded to LRM-15s. Yes, a little bit less damage, but it's going to be compensated for. First off, the LRM-15, because it doesn't fire as much missiles, it doesn't generate as much heat. In addition to that, each of the launchers weigh three tons less, so we have six more tons to play with. We're going to install five additional heat sinks and one more ton of LRM ammo because this mech uses a lot of ammo. We're going to keep the medium lasers. You could downgrade those to small lasers, but I do think the longer range of the medium laser is pretty relevant here. And um, other than that, we're not going to change too much else. We're going to keep that 416 armor. There is one thing I'd like to do, though. This mech has a tendency to get shot in the head a lot, so I want to harden the armor here. I'm going to take it up to about 24, and anywhere else we could harden the armor. I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm just going to take it off the legs. And the reason for that is because I find that the legs are the least likely part of the mech to be destroyed. So I don't mind shaving a bit of armor off the legs. Sometimes 
means you lose a leg, and that sucks. But at least all of the weapon systems are functional in that case, so I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. Okay, so the Archer is a mech that really excels in defense, and even though that this is a Warzone type mission, I'm gonna order my guys to stay right here with the F1 and then F3 command, because I'm gonna perch right here. As you can see, there's some nice line of sight blocking cover so I can escape enemy gunfire, and I want the enemy to come to me. This area has a lot of clean sight lines, and our lance is an LRM focused lance, so we are gonna want to bombard the enemy at a distance. Uh, don't know if they're actually gonna, yeah, I didn't, didn't think so. Like, uh, I had a feeling we would lose our lock there, but you can see I'm on this nice little perch, and uh, we've got great sight lines to begin bombarding the enemy. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and tell my allies to focus fire on this mech that is in the open. And the best thing to do is to stand still and shoot unless you need to move, because moving does generate heat. It, it does activate your engine and push it a little bit further. Okay, over here, let's squish this guy. You know, we're not gonna brag about knocking out a- Oh, he's in range of my lasers, so... Let's go ahead and just hit him with everything we've got here. We wanna just knock him out of the game as quickly as possible. Order my men to get back in formation. And it looks like the next wave is a Warhammer and- Oh, got two Warhammers. Oh, let me get off of my perch here because they got some uh, big guns themselves. I'm gonna tell my guys to move forward. I, I don't know what they- Oh, oh, oh god! Don't do it! Don't- I'm- I'm- I'm not that big of a threat. You should definitely shoot at my allies and not me. Okay, here we go. This looks perfect. The other Warhammer is falling behind a little bit, which is great. Oh god, don't shoot me! So like I said, I do have my nice little perch here, and my perch is nice because I've got these obstructions. And the perfect thing is, it's okay if they shoot at me a little bit, because I do have very heavy armor. And the ideal situation is they shoot me a little bit, they shoot each of my allies a little bit, and what ends up happening is that they just do armor damage and they don't do anything else. Oh god, well, no, it's okay. We got, like I said, we got heavy armor. We can, we can handle this. My armor is actually looking really good. In fact, may, maybe you can shoot a few more at me. Hopefully my missiles are able to hit. Yes, they are. He's almost in range of the medium lasers. Although he is beginning to backpedal himself. Massive damage on his arm there. I feel like my allies are derping a little bit, but you know, what, what can you do? They're doing their main job of uh, chilling. I mean, they're, they're doing okay. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. All right, regroup, tell them to move here. This time I think I'm gonna let them just completely come to me and I'm gonna eat some shots because our Crusader looks like he got a little banged up there. And we got something right there. Looks like the Hatchetman is the first to disentangle itself from all of the terrain. Sometimes the AI is um, not super smart, but what can you do? Uh, I'm gonna tell my team to attack it, except for the Crusader. The Crusader, I want you to stay there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let them get a few hits on me because um, I can handle the heat right now. Right now, I am twisting a bit so that I can have them do some damage to each part of my mech rather than focus firing on any one particular part. And now that he's in range of the medium lasers, I am going to target that center torso. Let me try to knock him out right here. There we go. All right, so he worked up my left torso a good bit, so I will probably try to hide my left torso and show my right side. I spy with my little eye a locust who's getting a little too nosy. Oh yeah, saturate him with the missiles. I see, uh, what is that in the background? Some kind of an assault mech. Pretty chunky looking boy over there, not sure what it is. Let's go ahead and zap him, there we go. And then we've got a, uh, who's closer? It's a Cyclops, interesting. Well, let's begin bombard, uh, of course. That's one of the frustrating things about being an LRM user. There we go. Let him have it. The missiles will fly, and my allies are kind of derping. Yeah, he's right in front of you there, boys. You, you want to start, you want to start shooting this guy? I'm just saying, except you, you stay there. 
So I'm gonna tell the other guys to engage. Why don't I just tell them to attack all the time? Well, they have a problem. If you tell them to attack, they like to get close. And that's not the strategy here. The strategy is not to get close. The strategy is to stay far away. And that's not what they do when you tell them to attack. Now, sure, you can see the archer over there is backpedaling, but he's not backpedaling until he gets into medium laser range. And that's just, like I said, that's just not what we want. Also, the reason he's hiding is because his arm is really banged up. And that's how you can control your lance to avoid, or at least do what you can to avoid as much damage as the enemy can dish out. Like, let's take a look at him. You can see right here, his arm and his leg is pretty banged up, but, you know, he's gonna be fine. In fact, all of us should be able to get through this without any armor breaches. Not this spider, though. He may have an elite pilot, but, you know, that's that's not gonna be enough. That's right, let the missiles fly. And look at that, we're down to 625 missiles, so, you know, you might have thought that we wouldn't go through so many missiles, but let me tell you, we can go through some missiles. And you can see in the results screen, I was a little worried a lance was going to cut me off at the end, but I managed to sneak through. The archer and the catapult, nearly undamaged. The crusader, a little banged up, but that's what the armor's for. It did its job and held. Same with on my archer. Got a little worked up on the left torso, but overall, just fine. We scrapped a lot of mechs there, and this build did an absolute ton of damage. And I don't really think there was any point in time where the enemy really had a chance to cause big damage on the lands because this is a great build for the archer and a great lance setup for the archer. Okay though, so before we wrap this video up, I know someone's gonna ask, what about lost technology? So this is what I would say. First, I probably wouldn't invest in the normal archer, the ARC-2R. I would get a better variant of the archer first, but if you wanted to do it anyways, this is what I would do. First, I would upgrade those LRMs into LRM-15 with the Artemis system. This will make each of the launchers weigh one ton more, so now the mech weighs two tons more in total, but the Artemis system makes the missiles way more accurate, which is going to increase your DPS quite a bit. Keep in mind that you do need Artemis ammo. It will not accept the standard LRM ammo in the launcher. Now, to deal with the extra two tons, we are going to upgrade our single heat sinks into double heat sinks. They're twice as good and they weigh the same amount. So we've got one, two, three double heat sinks here. Keep in mind that you can shove one into this engine heat sink slot and that'll make that big thick boy into only a single critical slot. And that is actually equal to having six single heat sinks. And if you remember, the old build has five single heat sinks so not only does this accommodate the better missiles it actually has slightly better cooling so a minor victory there but overall hey I'll take it but there you go this version of the archer will perform even better because of the higher accuracy of the missiles more damage in the same time frame might even save you some missiles destroying the enemies sooner and save you some heat needing to launch a smaller amount of missiles to get the same job done anyways i hope you enjoyed this let me know what you think down in the comments section how do you design the archer especially from the perspective of helping out a new player who may not have have all of the lost tech options available to him. He might be having it in the early 3010s or 3020s. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. If you'd like to catch me live playing MechWarrior 5, because I do play on Twitch, you can find me on Twitch at GetGoodFox, where I both play by myself and with my crew of Ronins. And if you don't like Twitch, don't worry. I upload the streams to my second YouTube channel, Get Good Fox VODs. That's V O D S, where all of the completed Twitch streams get uploaded as YouTube videos. So I can see you there or I can see you on Twitch. Anyways, thank you so much for seeing this quick build guide. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Let me know what mech you'd like to see me redesign next. But at the end of the day, of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.